Dreamcast. Hey yo, what's going on everyone? Welcome to another edition of the Streamcast. I am Blackamora and we have been spending a lot of the last few episodes just interviewing, spotlighting various people in or around the gaming industry, whether they be content creators, directors, and this might be one of the best ones ever because I've got a massive guest with a massive smile, massive energy. Please join me in welcoming my guest today, I now. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Hey. Best of the winter. Look at that. I'm hating your podcast. There, they got. Yeah, this was recorded in winter times. Look at this. <laughs> uh, it's all good. It's all good. It's cold all year round here, man. Listen, it's a, yeah, it's like that's a, yeah, that's how you know it's a UK podcast. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this is May. <laughs> how are you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good. A little bit cold. Apologies on on the visions if people are watching because uh, nah, man, I've got, there's no heating in, in my office at That's the minute. It's so a bit good, bro. It's a bit balked, so I'm sorting that out. But until then, I got like five layers on. But it's all good. The vibes <laughs> are still here. It's all good. Yes, it might be cold where you are, but you've got the heat and you're bringing that fire to the podcast. Here of we go. Yes, I'm seeing that library esque collection behind you. I'm seeing screens. It's all good. Man's dripping. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to wonder if these screens turn on after this. It's probably ice inside, you know. Bro, ice you inside might have behind the iced. Yeah. Just yeah. <laughs> <Like a car>. <laughs> 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 want to play some PS5, isn't it? <laughs> Scrape in the windows. <laughs> of course, I know who you are, but there may be some people that don't. So, could you give a little bit of a description as to who you are and what you do? Yeah, sure. My name's Inel. Uh, sometimes you might see me online as Inelius on like platforms like Twitch and such or Instagram. Uh, I'm an actor, comedian and, and voiceover artist uh, uh, in video games. So you might have heard my voice in certain things, but you didn't know it was me. But now you know when I, I let you guys know on a few things I've worked on like as we go along. That's right. Yes. And of course, Inel is a big time gamer because... I know I've been watching his Twitch streams. I've been watching those Ring Fit videos that he put out, which were <laughs> very, very good. Um, but I guess let's take it back a little bit. Let's go to your earliest gaming memory. Do you remember your first ever game and console? Uh, yeah, I remember the, the I got I got a hand me down console. Um, I got a I think it was an Atari. It was either a fifty two hundred or seventy eight hundred. It was one of them. I think it was a fifty two hundred. Like not like. I, I weren't born in like the 70s, but like <laughs> it was just, it was a heavy down console, innit? Like you get this one <laughs> because everyone else is playing on this one, innit? Everybody else had like a, a Nintendo Entertainment Systems or like yeah. Master Systems and stuff. I had the Atari, innit? So like I was playing games like Centipede and, and, and Tennis and things like that and Pitfall. So that that was my earliest memories I remember playing with. Just like the joystick, one button, that's it. Jump. Uh, that's... <laughs> hey, I mean... <laughs> Simple that game. That sounds Jump. so weird to me. <laughs> I, look, I, I missed out with all of the great consoles like the Atari and the Neo Geo and stuff like that. And I'd love to just... I hope one day there is like a proper exhibition museum of these video games consoles and you're allowed to, you know, try out games on them. I'd love to pick up an Atari, like the joystick and one button. I never had that. So yeah. Bruv. I, 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 you know, you can, get I, that new, you can get Ataris now, you know, with, um, really? yeah, Atari released a console last year that has like all the classics on it. Yeah. We'll but talk, we'll I don't think it's very this. good though. Like it's oh, all okay. emulated and, and oh, so but like it's yeah. Mm -hmm. But you, you can know, play them still. Sometimes with emulated consoles, you can get the NES Mini or you can get the PlayStation yes. Classic. So <laughs> is it more like the classic? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, hey, the choice is still out there though. If you want to, <laughs> if you're serious, you can you can you can you can try out the Atari uh, games out there. You yeah, know yeah. they got they got them they got them. It was it was called the Atari VCS. That was it. Yeah. Atari huh. VCS. Yeah. Maybe, okay. oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one. Maybe it doesn't that's ring a bell. One. Okay. Cool. I'll, I'll have a look for that. It came Thanks. out uh, <laughs> June twenty twenty one. Oh was wow! It? As peak pandemic. Okay. Yeah. I should have picked one up. <laughs> Collectors so, items now. Yeah. Oh, they're gonna go for so much. I can't get a SNES Mini anywhere. Uh, but 
Well, you know, so we talked about your earliest game and your earliest console, but what about your best? What about your favorite? If I was to ask you, what's your top five games? What would you say? Oh, that's tough, you know. Like, I think they're constantly changing depending on how I'm feeling. But uh, at the minute, I'd like the five I'd put in there at the minute, I'd say is probably Perfect Dark on the uh, Nintendo 64. It was like a spiritual successor to like GoldenEye. And it was like the first like console multiplayer game I played that had four player split screen. Plus bots. Plus bots. <laughs> there was no, it was even if you had split screen game, that was it. If it was just mm. you, you and one other person, it was you and one other that person. Was it. Yeah. Chest. That's it. You're just shooting your friend and you can see where your friend is because you can see on the screen it's split screen, isn't it? Yeah. But, but this is the first time you could do four player plus bots. And I think that uh, with the expansion pack, you could have up to eight bots with you. I think it was that. I think it was up to a total of 12 players. Someone will probably correct me if I'm wrong. But like you can you can do proper like capture the flags, death match, things like that. Uh and you can and you have a computer holding you down as well. As oh, so it, sick. Oh, it was the first time <laughs> that got me properly into like multiplayer uh gaming. And it really made me feel like after that, like seek seek it out like uh other other multiplayer games like Unreal Championship and things like that. And so like it was the first one that seeded that. And plus, like the campaign was fantastic, the single player campaign. It also had co-op campaign as well. You could play this you could play the campaign two player split screen. You could do count they had a mode counter co-op where <laughs> it was the first it was the first game I think I can't even remember any game before this that had one player person player one is is playing the campaign. Player two could take control of any enemy in the campaign and try and kill them. Wow. Wicked. That, you Wicked know what? Player. Yeah. And every time <laughs> player two would die, they'd respawn as another enemy in the level. That's so sick. But if player one died, that was basically it. That was it. That was okay. it. Okay. But player two only had like minimal health in it. The same health that mm, like, like regular enemies would have. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Wicked, bro. Oh, my God. I wish that was more prevalent in households. 100%. You know? You know when um, siblings would play games and then the younger sibling would get the controller that wasn't plugged in? <laughs> <laughs> I wish that... Nah, you could... got played when you was a kid, didn't it? No, no, no. You know what? No, no, no. Look, first of all, I was the eldest child. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, they give you the Atari <laughs> controller, innit? With the one button, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> Second of all, my parents made sure that we always got multiplayer okay. games, which I very much appreciate and love them for. Um, we always played games together. Whether it be FIFA, Dragon Ball Z, or you know something yeah. else, um, so uh, yeah, we, we always had time, good good times playing games together. Um, but yes, <laughs> perfect dog. <laughs> what else is on your list? <laughs> uh, I want to say Far Cry Two. Far Cry Ooh. Two was was a oh, di- this was like the for me is one of the best open world first person games I ever played when it when it came out. And like some of the tech that it had, it was incredible. Like it was, it was. Uh, I, I can't remember which which African country it was set in. It was. I remember it was on the continent of Africa. And there was one. There was one. One of the major things was it had a proper day to night cycle where if you like shot a tree down or shot a branch of a tree over a couple of days, you could see the branch grow back. Oh, like the grass nice. would burn, and if the b- grass was burnt the grass would, would grow back. And if you like started at like a, like a, like a fire in like in the, in like hay or some grass or something, it would spread and it would continue spreading until it couldn't spread anymore. Like tech like that was new. And and there's still games to this day that don't even do any of that stuff. Mm. And like the fact that like trees would grow back and, and things like that, like you can come back to a village after you burnt it down after like a, a day, the, the village is still burnt. <laughs> come back after a week, the, the village is back. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Six though. How Plus, many villages did you burn down? <laughs> how many villages, bro? It's a proper racist game. Oh, <laughs> I know, I'm not, no, I'm playing, I'm playing. It but it, there was one, there was one thing, there was one mechanic, there was a sick mechanic that it had. It had a um, like the main, your main character got malaria right at the beginning of the game, oh, okay. and you had to manage that. You had to go, you had to go to the, the local doctors if you go to any of the villages and get some malaria tablets, innit? And at any point, any point, the malaria can start flaring up. Start flaring up, and you have to take your pills, and you pop a pill and take a pill. Middle of a shootout, you'd be in the middle of a shootout, take the pill, 
boss battle. <clears throat> you get them. <clears throat> and you start having to take the pills. But you can run out of pills. If you don't go to the local, you can run out, bruv. You can be in the middle of a big mission. Anytime, bruv, during the cutscene. And then the thing was, you check, you check the pills. If you run out, you check the you check the tablet to you, you open it, you see it's empty, and you're like, no. Nah. <laughs> Set your progress back. Really this was before break. auto save. You had to save manually. Phone boxes. <laughs> Bro, if you didn't if you didn't if you didn't save the game and the malaria flared up, that's it. You're I done. remember then one big one boss that took me ages to do. Kill the boss. As soon as I kill the boss, malaria's like <coughs> <coughs> malaria starts flaring up. That's it. You gotta do it again. You gotta do it again. You gotta oh manage God. that. You gotta manage that. It's real, real illness, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wicked mechanic in that game. Wicked mechanic. And you had like uh, companions as well. The companions with um, they could if you could you could help people out with like mm. uh, in the local villages doing different things, and then they could become your companion. And then if you got into a bit of trouble, they could like help revive you and stuff like that, get you out oh, of a nice. little bit of business. Wicked game. Far Cry Two, amazing. If you haven't played it, it was on the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty and um. PS3, PS3. Mm-hmm. and PC. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. That's a baby. <laughs> Bruh, it was one of the best first person. It was proper open world. Like, you're in the jungle. You're mm. in the jungle. Your car could break down. Your car could break down. You have to, you have to fix up the car. Your, gu- your guns could jam. Your guns could jam. In the middle of a firefight, if you pick up an old gun mm. and it's all rusted, you just, bruv, it uh... could just jam and then blow up in your, fa- in your hand. You die. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> you have to oh go buy goodness. the brand new guns for the triple mm. the price, or you get the second hand ones, or you can find some second hand ones on the floor, like when you kill people, mm. but then ones could jam. You know what? Uh, you've actually really sold this game to me. Listen, um, I, if you ain't I played want it, this, play I want... this game. <laughs> oh, cry. I can't. Just... Before that, I can't even remember a game that was set in Africa. I can't even remember. I can't even remember a game point. before that. That's a good point. Well, I hope that we see more games set in Africa and hundred percent, not just tokenism. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to watch someone stream Far Cry Two, or if no one will do it, I'll do it. <laughs> hey, do it, do it, do it! Some fantastic black, like uh, black protagonists in there as well, and then uh, and some like side characters as well. Uh, and I and I think that the evil guy was actually a white South African guy. I think he was, yeah, the main villain. If I remember now, I'm trying to remember his name. Wicked game. Wicked game. Uh, Wicked game. The, the malaria mechanic, people hated it. Loved it. <laughs> Loved it. I feel, Do you mind yeah, much, yeah. How, how much armor you got? Don't matter. Yeah, malaria don't care about armor. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I just what love the fact that your... it could happen at any time. Mid cutscene. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? It's any time. Mid cutscene. <laughs> Did you, did you know what I said? This Anytime. I had to do a double take. Wait, what? Listen, the whole game took place in, in first person, didn't it? Everything happens in first person. Like, mm. there's no like third person camera or anything like that. Yeah. If you want to look at your map, you have to pull the map out and you have to hold the map out with the compass. Oh, okay. But listen, when you're driving, okay. you, when you're driving, you have to pull out the map and you're trying to stare, look around the map. Listen. Hey, I, I remember. I remember. Um... Then your car breaks down, hey. and then you're trying to fix the car. Someone's shooting at you, and your malaria is flaring up. Mad. <laughs> Far Cry Two. <laughs> uh, so uh, that's uh, Far Cry Two and Perfect Dark. What else is in your top five? Um. Oh. I I I I'd probably say Breath of the Wild, Zelda. Mm. Just how, in oh, terms of like open world games, how that made me feel, into the sense of like exploration and discovery, amazing. Like I, like hands down, everywhere I went in that game, I was like in awe because I, like, I don't know what's around the corner, don't know what I'm gonna expect, don't know what I'm gonna see. And every time you'd see something fantastic or you discover something, and you're like, yo, I swear I'm the only person who's seen this because it was <laughs> it. That's the that's the that's the feeling it gave you when you're playing, and I love yeah. that. And I, and like for that reason, I've never gone back to play it again because I was like, I can't get that feeling back. It's mm. it's it's a similar feeling with like Elden Ring. Like the first time you play Elden Ring, amazing. Like you can you can replay it, but you know where everything is. You know where all the secrets yeah. are. It's not the same. But like that first playthrough, Breath of the Wild, one of the best first playthroughs I've ever had. 
Um, I say Picross is probably one of my favorite game series. Okay. Like I love puzzle games. Picross is like a, a puzzle game. It's like a uh, you get like a you get like a grid, and then you get some numbers on on the x axis on the y axis, and you have to kind of chisel away to discover a picture. It's like it's like a logic kind of mathematical puzzle picture game. Like, like they've been on Nintendo platforms for a while. I think the first one I played was on was Picross on Game Boy uh, with with Mario, and then they've been doing Picross ever since. There's like there's like ten on the Switch. I've got like wow. Eight. There's bare them on the Switch. <laughs> they're, they're like, I think they're like eight, nine pound each. Okay, they got like, yeah. They got like 300, 400 puzzles. I got, I'm a play for them. <laughs> love it, love it. It just wakes me up in the mornings. I, I get, just do a couple puzzles. Oh. No, that's the best way to wake up. You know, wake your brain, challenge mm. yourself. Mm. Yeah. And then um, I think my last game, I'd probably say favorite game, uh, Incredible Crisis, I'd probably say. Um, on the PlayStation One, it's like um, it's a, it's the first game that made me feel like games can be anything. Um, because mm. it's a it's a game it's a game about a family basically, and they have like a crazy day each family member. You play each campaign is like uh, a family member. It's grandma's birthday, and like grandma says, All right, be home at this time. We're gonna have like a nice family meal. Them things there, so everybody mm. like goes about their day. Dad goes to work. Like mum goes like, to the shops to get the ingredients for like food. The kids go to school, them things there. But what happens is they all have the maddest day. So for the dad, like the dad starts off, he works in an office. It's, it's a set in this game, set in Japan. It's uh, dad works in an office, and every uh, I guess I'd say event is like a mini game. So the first one is it's just a simple. It's like it's morning office workout. So everyone's got to do like the morning stretches and you've got to do like a rhythm game to do the stretches. Then all of a sudden a construction ball comes crashing through the, the building, starts chasing man. So now you've got to do a chasing sequence. You've got to do a chasing sequence. Now you're in the lift, but then the lift is busted and you have to try to press the emergency button to stop the lift. How many times can you press the thing before you crash to the ground? That's another mini game. Then all of a sudden, man gets shot out of the, of the skyscraper onto the ledge. Man's got a balance. Try to keep his balance so he don't fall off the ledge. Then man falls off the ledge, ends up in, in an ambulance. Now man's in an ambulance, and the ambulance guys are asking you questions to see if you're conscious enough. So they ask you big math questions. Like, fuck. Oh, okay. <laughs> and you've got to answer it in like five seconds. The next, <laughs> man, ma next man gets kicked out of the, the ambulance, goes hurtling down the road. Now you've got to dodge all the cars in the traffic and stuff. It's another <laughs> mini game. The next... Man's on the Ferris wheel with some next woman, and he's given a massage in the Ferris wheel. It's a, ma it's a this is this is just the dad's campaign, and this is half of the dad's campaign. <laughs> Incredible <laughs> Crisis is one of the best games, one oh of the best gosh. games you play on the PlayStation One. It's fantastic. That's just half of the dad story. <laughs> then you got to play with the mom. Then you got to play with the, the the little boy. Then you got to play with the daughter. Sick game. I really want them to remake that game because that sounds so much fun. You can't remake these games. There's certain I, games that are just like for their time. I, like I you know, so. there's certain types of games you just never mm. see again. It's just that's yeah. just how it is because uh, games make t games cost too much money to make nowadays. It's true. The, the, the expectations are too high. Like no one's <laughs> funding games like that. Who's gonna fund a game like that? If I come to you and say that's the pitch, who's gonna give me a couple mil to make that? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question that i no, do not have the answer to you <laughs> yeah. there you go yeah, Those, they're just it's just of their time in it like yeah. certain games are of their time and like if you're around in them times or you've got a copy of those games fantastic but you ain't gonna see those games again i've got massive fomo now <laughs> you can play like it still that. if you find a copy i've got one here PS1, somewhere but like... i might get one <laughs> Yeah, well, if you got a PS One Mini, you can, you know. <laughs> okay, all right. We'll talk, we'll talk. I didn't say anything. <laughs> Before we get on with the rest of the podcast, I'd just like to give a special shout out to Spilt Milk Studios for their support over on Patreon. To find out how you can get a shout out just like them, make sure to go to patreon.com forward slash streamcast for more. I feel like there is a little bit of the th of a theme with the five games that you picked. They all. They kind of push the boundaries of gaming a little bit with yeah, each yeah. step, with each game that you mentioned, whether it's the mechanics in the game or whether the, what the game wants you to do. Um, so, yeah, I like your picks. They're very strong. Well, I, I just like game, games that 
give me new experiences. Like you can't have new experiences every time. Sometimes you just want to like stick on a like a shooter and just do some shooty shooty bang bang. Yeah. But like some, but like I mainly play games because I I want to experience new new things I've never ex- experienced before. Because like as I said, like I grew up with Atari playing games like Centipede, where you just you're just like one little pixel centipede walk going around the map. And to the point where now I'm playing what you're playing games like The Last of Us, where it's like huge, like sprawling worlds, like amazing graphics, like intense stories, dramatic characters, and it's like yo, that's the journey that games have had. Like I've seen it gone gone go through like basic pixels on a screen to to games where you can't tell if it's like real life or not. And so like that's why I love playing indie titles because they they're always there's usually games every year that come out that try and do something different, that try and push the boundaries of like this entertainment medium and try and like give the player new experiences that you you just can't get anymore. And like like I, I love AAA games, but there's you're just not gonna get those type of experiences there yeah. as much anymore because games cost too much money to make. Like we already know how much like half of these games like cost to make and how much money they're making. No one's taking risks on on these like like bespoke yeah. kind of new fangled like like experiences because there's too much risk. And so yeah. we, we, we 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 I rely on like the indie scenes kind of make those and. And yeah, they're pulling through, man. Yeah, they definitely are. Um, I have two questions, and they are AAA related. You brought up Breath of the Wild as one of your top five games. Yeah. How excited are you about Tears of the Kingdom? I, I'm excited, but I don't feel like I'm gonna have that same feeling that I did playing the first Breath of the Wild. But like, I, I feel like I'm gonna be pleasantly surprised with some of the mechanics they're gonna introduce. Nintendo are fantastic when it comes to game mechanics; like they're one of the best. Mm. And that's why oh, they're yeah. still around. Like when it comes to game mechanics, game feel, how games make you feel playing them. Like, like I'm at the minute I'm playing through Kirby, Kirby's and the Forgotten whatever on the on the Switch. <laughs> on the you, you know, you know. What, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. But it's a it's a simple platform game. I play like a million platform games, but like the feeling I have when I'm playing Kirby is amazing. I'm like, yo, this is amazing. Game. But it's it's like it, like. To, to anyone else, if you look at it, it's like it just looks like any old platform game. We've had yeah. like thousands of platform games, but when you play Kirby, feels different, and it feels mm. it feels fresh. Makes me feel like a kid playing it. Like yeah. the music's so joyous, the visuals are so colorful and saturated and bold. When I'm playing through them, I'm like, yo, I'm loving this. And so I feel like I'll get that same feel with Tears of the Kingdom, but not necessarily that same sense of uh awe that i've got exploring the world of course hopefully i will but i don't feel like i will <laughs> temperate expectations there yeah, yeah exactly if i'm pleasantly surprised i'll take it mm-hmm. uh last of us have you watched the hbo series uh, i saw i saw the first episode uh, yeah i mm-hmm. think it's pretty i think it's pretty good like it's uh, i don't know if, Got games, game adapt, game adaptations to screen. Like most of them have been pretty decent. I don't know where like the everyone always says, "Oh, they're trash, they're trash." There's only been a few trash ones. Like there's been, there's always been decent ones. <laughs> I, I I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but I feel like there was a shift from the janky ones back in the nineties and previous to the ones you're getting now because the people who no, are involved was good ones back then like i mean i just watched that 1995 mortal kombat movie and my goodness that is hot garbage hey, listen, so hey, 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 that was decent back that in the day like, yo, that was <laughs> peak. Listen, listen, hey, hollywood weren't doing better than that like hey. <laughs> this was at the height i'd be mean, sure it was at the time <laughs> <laughs> johnny cage though the absolute star of that film amazing one-liners so yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then they got rid of him in the sequel. They got rid of most of him in the sequel. I think, uh, I think it was pr- uh, production issues of things, and mm. they got rid of most of the cast and replaced them. But like, uh, like Street Fighter, for example, Street Fighter, like Street Fighter, the, the live action was wasn't that great. But we had Street Fighter the animated movie, which was fantastic. Came True. out like around about the same time. I think it was like ninety four, something like that. Fantastic. Like we've always had decent ones. It's just. I think people always focus on the on the trash runs. Like Mario Brothers, the movie was trash. Mario Brothers, the cartoon, fantastic. <laughs> you know, you know, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like Sonic <laughs> had a few 
Mm. Oh, hit and misses. But he's had some fantastic ones as well. He's had some good cartoon series. He's had some, he's had decent movies now. It's like mm-hmm. we, we've, yeah. like, we've we've always had like good video yeah. game adaptations. But I think the the trash ones like just cause more of a scene than yeah. <laughs> yeah sure. You know, you know that's actually a good point. You know, because if something's decent or good, even people say, "Oh, it's good," or, or "It was alright," and then yeah. move on. But if something's bad, they'll be like, "It's trash," and this is why the creator's yeah. mum was a. Yeah, <laughs> it's like why you gotta talk about a creator's mom like that? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <"What are you laughs> <for?"> <laughs> Leave his mom out of it, you know. <laughs> but like, hey, there was a Mortal Kombat animated series as well, and that was decent. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that was decent too. <laughs> Earth Jim, do you remember Earth So Jim good, a... so good, so good. See, so Earth good. Jim had an so animated good. series as well. No, it was fantastic. Goodness. I remember watching it was, that on there's, Nickelodeon. There's been loads. There's been yeah. loads of good ones. <laughs> <laughs> there's been some there's been some trash ones like the Donkey Kong animated series where all that but <laughs> there, oh, man. there's been <laughs> bad and good. It's like but there's been there's been like I don't know why the people always say like video game adaptations to anything has been trash. And mm. it, that's not necessarily been the case. I don't feel. That's fair. I, I think uh you you've made a very good case, I'd say. Um <laughs> There's been some bad ones, don't get me wrong. Oh yeah. <laughs> but like <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, let's get into a, a particular game that I brought up earlier, Ring Fit. Um, it's one that I think whenever the game Ring Fit is mentioned, you are one of the first people that come to my mind. Um, mm-hmm. Those streams were legendary during the pandemic era. They kept me going. They kept a lot of people going. Um, talk to me about what got you into Twitch and why Ring Fit was your game of choice and why do you think you were so successful at it? Oh, there's three questions there. Uh, <laughs> uh, what got me into Twitch was I love playing video games, and like there's so. And do you know what it was? It was for selfish reasons at first. It was there were so many moments where playing games, I was like, oh, I wish someone saw that. And like, yeah. like back in the day, you could do like Xbox record that, and you could say them things, and then the Xbox would save it. But like, where would you put those clips? And like it's and a lot of the time it was about in the moment what happened in the moment rather than that last like 30 seconds so i was like and so that's initially why i, I started uh, doing twitch and then i immediately found like there's like amazing community vibe around that and that you can like you can have in jokes and things like that and, and experience things together in, in a really cool way and i'm just helping to kind of facilitate that and so that's kind of what got me to to ring fit like facilitating those experiences like i wanted to kind of keep fit and healthy uh during the pandemic couldn't go to the gym and i used to go to the gym like two three times a week and so i was like i need to start working out and and like ring i had ring fit uh and like i knew it was fantastic like i've been a fan of most like video game uh workout adaptations i've got i've got more you know i've got like i got get fit with with mel b i've got zumba i've got night connect training your fit shapeness evolved like all, all all of those, I got all the all the gaming like workout things, and some of them are absolutely okay. amazing. Some of them require too much space right. or equipment or mm. dedication to, and uh, and Ring Fit was was uh, it's got that Nintendo feel. It, it makes you feel good yes. playing it because it's a it's a well built game, and you're actually exercising at the same time. And my mm. thing was just like like. A lot of these exercises you can just do even if you're not playing the game. But like the game helps facilitate that. And so the reason why I started streaming it was because I was like, wanted my community to kind of stay as fit and healthy as I was. And so I was like, just follow along in it. Just like you just need to copy do copy me and copy what you see on the screen and we'll we'll get fit t- together. And people started doing it and people started buying the game and and like setting high scores and then because they're setting high scores i want to try and beat those high scores <laughs> and then everyone's trying to like outdo each other and like it's great because it's not a thing of just i'm just sitting in my my gaming chair trying to hit set hit a, set a high score it's a mm. thing where i'm physically getting stronger so i can set a high score and and i think that's what the difference was because you could tell from where people started their scores were down at the bottom and then now the scores are at the top and like you can't cheat that that's yeah. you getting stronger and so, yeah, that's that's what really kind of got me into it, like, and kept me doing it for like over a year. To, like, how long I've been doing them for? Amazing, honestly, it's one of those games that perfectly combines the traditional aspect of a game, but then also wants to better you at the same time. And yes. as you 
you said it's not you sitting down shooting you know on, on other games you're active and i think that literally attacks one of the stigmatizations of gaming that oh you're just lazy people sitting in a basement 12 hours you know mountain dew doritos yeah, yeah. but you know you're you're here squatting and you're beating bosses squatting or doing um, <laughs> yoga poses it's, it's the best of both worlds and me a fellow you know fitness person it is one of the best presented uh exercise themed games that i've seen i've got it i love it um it's so good and yeah i just do want to give you credit and dues and shout outs and thank yous for you know, oh, doing man. that in the pandemic um in a really dark time where all the gyms were shut you know even walking outside was a mission um Yo, that was that was, a, that was a military operation guy <laughs> bro honestly <laughs> <and it's... laughs> nowhere near as bad but i think it's the closest thing we've had to what people who went through the war had to go through like yeah lockdown mm. it was massive it changed so many people's lives um mm -hmm. but yeah you were one of those shining lights during that dark period so once again i want to give you your thank i want to say oh, thank safe, you bro no oh, thank you very much you're welcome <laughs> um and yeah, let's talk about that video that you made. It was just so good. Uh, what went into going into that? Do you remember which one I mean? Oh, no, uh, it was like a re know? it was like a review, and then you were actually doing running as well in it. Oh, um, the ring, my, oh, my ring fit rev uh, year year long review. That yes, was it. yes, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, talk to me about the what went on there. You know, production value very good. Oh, thanks, man. Like, well, like I always want to try and put my best foot forward. Like, I know it's not always possible, but like. Like online, I'm very specific online because I guess I'm one of those people online that use my real name everywhere. And and when you use your real name everywhere, you got to maneuver a lot different to, to people that just got like 82 BC 6655 <laughs> underscore as their name. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. I don't have no burner accounts. I just I just maneuver as me. And because I maneuver as me, I I I, I try to ensure that things that I put out there are reflective of who I am. And I and I don't want things to kind of come back on me in any kind of way because because I've said some wild stuff. Because I don't believe in saying wild stuff anyway, especially on the internet. And so mm. so that's why like I kind of produced it in a certain way. I I, I tried. I, I said for first up, like fitness and and keeping fit is a is a is a personal thing. And so I wanted to kind of make sure people knew where I was coming from before like I did my review. So I, I let people know about like my fitness history like what sort of injuries I had and things like that and why I was picking up the game to play it rather than just I'm reviewing it because Nintendo gave me a, do you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And so, so I thought, let me let people know uh, that off the bat. And then I guess it was a case of once people know my background, they're more likely to kind of listen to what I have to say, especially when it comes to things like fitness People like anything fitness related, people always want to know your personal thing. They want to see your before pictures. They want to see your after pictures. Yeah. So, because they want to know that you know what you're talking about, mm. rather than just saying what you're saying. And they were, and I, and and because my review was coming like a year after the game came out, like there's no algorithms gonna be looking. At. <laughs> like, <laughs> no algorithms gonna be looking yeah. at. No one's gonna be searching for the game. I so I was like, all right, I need to make it personal to me, and I need to. And I wanna, I wanna put it, put this piece of content out there uh, that is representative of how I feel about the product. But also, I wanna showcase like the particular skills that I have when it comes to like video making and editing and and things like that. And so, uh, from the beginning, I, I saved every stream that I did, uh, every clip. Uh, I saved them all to terabytes, <laughs> <laughs> terabytes of stuff. And then, as I was playing the games each week. I was making notes and uh, and jotting down my thoughts and feelings uh, to the point where I was like, all right, it's been a year. I got, I think I've got enough material and stuff that I want to talk about. Uh, and then like set about making it. I think it took about two, three weeks to 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 script it, to f get all the footage together and edit it up and uh, and uh, and make it look all nice. It it took a while. I, I always take ages making videos, which is why I don't do that many. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember it took about like three weeks or so, and I put it out there. And I remember it, I, I think it got, I think it got like a hundred views, and I was happy with that. I was like, listen, like hundred people see it, sweet. And I think I had like three, three, like three comments or something like that. And I was like, sweet, I'm happy with that. 
because I'm not I'm 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 a realist. I'm I'm realistic and stuff like that. I'm like the algorithms only work if you put things out constantly. Yeah. Like, they don't work if you just like just like once and then you're done. And so, mm. Yeah, and then what what happened was basically because everyone was in lockdown, everyone wanted to get fit, and it came to I think it was like January January the first, twenty twenty one. And everyone's got the New Year's resolutions. Everyone wants to get fit. Yeah. And Ring Fit had like a huge boom because everyone was buying Ring Fit all of a sudden. Like mm-hmm. the price started skyrocketing up. People were paying like 500, 600 pounds for like Ring Fit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The price was going up. Nintendo couldn't put it out quick enough because, and the game had already been out for a year. But because of the mm. pandemic, because uh, of the pandemic, like everybody wanted it. Everybody wanted yeah. it because they were like, how do I stay fit and play games? And that was the answer. And because because of that, uh, everyone started searching for like Ring Fit on YouTube, and and like, yo, I want to find out what um, oh, yeah, what is this mm. game? What is this yeah. game like? And it just so happened like uh, that my review was 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 new. It was there. No, actually, it wasn't even new. I think it was been out for like, I think it was like out for six months or something like that. And it was I only had a couple hundred views, but I think because the because it came from like a personal space, like I said, and like the production values were quite high, people were really inv- really interested in it, and they're watching the video all the way to the end. And mm-hmm. like the algorithms, they they value the videos that people watch for a long, long time. Like they, yeah, they, they they like it when people watch videos from start to finish rather than watch the first ten seconds and then they click away. And because <laughs> everyone was watching the, the, the thing for the whole duration, mm. it was getting served up loads. And because the production was good, like it was getting served up higher than some of like the, the other uh, reviews that had already been on there for like since the mm. game came out in 2019. And uh, yeah, just skyrocketed and then just went to like 100,000 and 200,000. I think it's I think it's sitting on three hundred thousand at the minute. But jeez, yeah. let's go. But yeah, but I, I, it's, it's mainly down to algorithm though. But because the, <laughs> the video was there for months, bro. I swear <laughs> the video was there for at least half a year, at least. I mean, <laughs> hey, hey, you don't get three hundred k views if the video doesn't get made or if the video is not good. So you got to give yeah. yourself some pre- some credit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but at, at the same time, like I, it, it was it was a shock because mm. like the video had been out for ages. It wasn't a thing where I just yeah. put the video out and it went viral. The yeah. video went viral months after it was out. Months. You, yeah, YouTube is a, a very funny game like that, and yeah, yeah you, you made a good point. The algorithm does like when you watch a video for a lot of its uh, duration. Yeah, so you make know? sure you watch the end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the algorithm can tell when you are supporting your friends and you're just oh, liking yeah, the video and knows, clicking bro, off the video. Yeah. You're, <laughs> you're actually not like, helping your friends if you do that. <laughs> Stats, you know, check the stats. Check the stats. Bro, you ain't watched more than ten seconds. Look, yo, you're actually not PSA. You're actually not helping your friends if you're just clicking like and effing off the video, right? Yep. Just yep. Hey, hey. If anything, it, it makes it worse. It, it, it does. Worse. It does. Because it makes it oh, people like mm, they're clicking away after ten seconds. Nah, this this video's trash. The algorithm thinks you're probably clickbaiting people, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and then you're not gonna get spread out. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have the time, you can just put the video on mute and let the video play out because it, that well, is you know what so it is. It's hard because it. it used to be that way. Oh, you, when YouTube was first there, all it was all it was about was just views, and yeah. it, and the, people used to have auto refreshes in their their browser where they just have their video there, auto refresh every five seconds, and then mm-hmm. like the view will go up like by one every five seconds. And that's what people used to do just to get the views up. And then mm. YouTube changed once, like AdSense came in and things like that. YouTube changed it and said, "Right, we're we're not. It's not about views anymore. It's about watch time. How long are people watching the video for? Like in a percentage mm. kind of thing. Are they watching it for? Are they watching ninety percent of the video, or are they watching five percent of the video? And now, and when people are watching only five percent of the video, it marks it as this video's trash. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, simple. Yeah, this video's yeah. trash. They're only watching five percent of it. Yeah. Right, it's trash." Yeah, who wants to watch this? People are only watching 10 yeah. seconds. No. But then if, if you get a video where people watch it like 90, 95% of the way through, all, like most of it, and they're interacting with it with comments and likes, mm. then they're like, yeah, this video's, this video's fire. 
Yeah. Serve it to more people. This video's fire. That's it. <laughs> the answer lies in the heart of battle. If you want to support your friends, watch their videos. All the way through. <laughs> All the way through. <laughs> All the way. <laughs> Let it recommend you more their videos at the end. <laughs> That's what you know. That's, oh, yeah. You know, the algorithm loves it when you watch the video through to the end and then you click yeah. another one of their videos. Yeah, mm. let me watch another one of theirs. Mm. Loves it. Loves, it. <laughs> loves that. He loves it. <laughs> it does. It does. It does. But, but as I said, most people don't know about how these algorithms work. Yeah. Every website is like different. And so exactly. it's hard, like, educating people in that way. And I know some people probably try and want to be helpful, but they're probably making things worse. But like that, yeah, that's how it, that's how it works on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, sim it's similar on like TikTok and things like yeah. that. Yeah, well. yes, but yes, TikTok is very similar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. educating, not shaming, just you know, trying to spread yeah, that. Yeah, knowledge. no, yeah, not shaming, <laughs> just shaming, just, just watch the all, all the way through it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and what we will do is we will put a link to the fantastic, incredible I know video somewhere here, maybe on the screen, maybe in the description, maybe a pinned comment. Make sure you check out that video, put it at the end so they so you know they've seen it. Right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> See, this has always got a plan that I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. And make you sure you watch it. that. You've got to see it. Let people know. Let people know at the beginning. You might see it towards the end. Yes. <laughs> make sure you watch that video to the end as well, because obviously that supports I know a lot. <laughs> I did a little bit of digging, and I found out that you were part of Johnny and I know. Talk to me about that. Yeah, I've been, I've been active for, since I was a uh, young boy, man. I, I like studied drama and fit studies for like at, uh, at school and then uni and like, like I used to be a teacher I got my teaching degree I used wow. to teach in secondary schools yeah yeah, yeah. I used to teach like Ooh. drama fits like, bro I've been very working you know <laughs> no no I, I was alright you know I was quite a strict teacher like as like really I'm, I'm bubbly and that no I was strict <laughs> super strict detention for anything no mucking around <laughs> in my no 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 because I like if you're a nice teacher and then people will call over you that's it Mm, but yeah, you're if done. you're strict and then you could be nice afterwards when people know your rules in it and like I used to be like nah sh I'm strict you're here to learn you're not here to muck about yeah if you're going to disrespect mm. me I'm going to cuss your mom. you're going to get detention in it them things <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so like so like I, I keep it real I kept it real in the classes I was like like you get detention for anything in, like in my class like I don't stand for anyone disrupting because I put a lot of effort into it's into, true creating these lessons and making sure everybody's got all the learning objectives and making sure everyone's going to learn. I, if you're going to come and disrupt that, come out my class. And so <laughs> like, that's how I used to like roll, roll. And then, mm. and, but the, the lessons would be fun and they'd be educational and, and cool. But that's how I would be in the class. So, so like people know, don't overstep the mark. Don't get yeah. familiar, them things. Because <laughs> I, I'm, not your, I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here mm. to, to give you... Like as much education and advice and counsel so you can go out there and be adult in the world. And so, like, that's how I kind of carried things forward. And uh, I got to a point where, uh, like, my comedy, like, stand-up comedy was doing quite well. Um, the teacher was doing well. And then, like, some uh, TV producers wanted, really wanted to work with me and my friend Johnny. Uh, I did, like, a show in Edinburgh. Me and him did a show in Edinburgh together. And some producers saw us up there and they said, oh, do you want to sit down and work out some stuff to to create a TV show? I was like, yeah, let's do it. And then because we were teachers, it made like a good fit to do some stuff for to create a show for CBBC, like two two black teachers like with a comedy show like uh, that keep that's trying to keep it real uh, for like for for teenagers and and upwards and stuff. And I was like, yeah, cool. And so it got to a point where I had to kind of make a choice to pursue the acting full time. And leave teaching behind and so I like yeah made that choice so like I'll go back to teaching one day um but like yeah that was made a choice and we like got a tv show on like uh, uh on CBBC we did like two series of that and then like I just done loads of other stuff like since then like some stuff for CBC some stuff for other people uh loads of voiceover stuff yeah the rest is history man I mean it does very much seem like you made the right choice and I'm sure it wasn't an easy one, you know, leaving behind the teaching. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, look at your career, the things that you've achieved. Um, definitely, yeah. you know. Well, some of that stuff like, like works works together with like all the, the all the stuff that I learned as being a teacher works like trying to do content creation and things like that. Mm. Especially like holding people's attention, like that's the main thing. Because like <laughs> as a teacher, that's what you got. That's the main thing you got to do. Like you yeah. can have some wicked lessons, and you can be able to want to teach all these kids all these things. But you can remember these kids are like some some of these kids are, like thirteen years old, they're rebelling. Like they yeah. like year eight, year nine, and they don't really care. You got to make the lesson interesting and fascinating and and engaging for them for the whole duration they're in your class. And so it's similar to when you're doing live streams or like mm. any kind of content, like like that's online. You want to keep people's attention for as long as possible. We talked about algorithm just now. You want to keep people yeah. here for ninety <laughs> percent of the time. And so exactly. like there's certain things that I've learned through teaching that I I apply when I'm like creating my own content as well. Okay. Okay. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure I found out about this before you tweeted about it, but I was watching a show. You may have heard of it, Love Island. Um, <laughs> and then there was, there was this parrot, right? I think it was a parrot and it started talking and it sounded a lot like you. <laughs> Talk to me about that gig and how many other voice acting gigs have you got that you've been recognized for? <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, I've done loads, man. Like some, t- sometimes people recognize me on the, on some things. Some people they sometimes they don't. A lot of people they don't know it's me on Love Island on the Love Island Just Eat adverts. Uh, it is me, but like a lot of people just don't know. They they just don't know in it. They don't t- put two and two together. Some people they like, yeah, I know who that is. Um, yeah, I've done loads of, loads of stuff. Um, uh, I do the Bulldog skincare adverts. Been doing those for like the last wow. five six years. Like I've been the voice voice of that uh of that brand um Comedy Central like, I've been doing Comedy Central for about six six years now seven years like like doing their promos and things like that uh whole bunch of different video games indie titles some triple A's I can't speak about because some of them aren't out yet but like cool. yeah there's there's lots of different things man like I like I, I mainly use my my Twitch stream selfishly to to practice my voices I was like this is the best place to practice. I was like, what, in front of an audience, if people like it? <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. Good voice, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think that's selfish at all. I would say that's selfless. You're previewing. Hey, you got to make things yeah. work for you, innit? Exactly. Hey, this is, hey, it's part of your business plan, your strategy, and it's working. <laughs> no time is wasted time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no time is wasted time. Like, I, that's, I, I do it constantly. Like, I'll, be, I'll play, like, a big Japanese RPG. Like, last time I was doing that, I was playing, like, Lost, Lost Judgment on stream this is a while ago and and i literally i'll just i'll be playing playing that and i'll voice every character and i was like all right let's voice every character go on it's 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 a mammoth task because there's thousands of lines oh my God, but it's at the same time it's i'm just putting in work because i was like mm. eh. or oh, if i was to get a game like this i'm ready yeah exactly yeah <laughs> you know what yeah <laughs> oh my what, God. you think i'm just gonna turn up and then they say yeah <laughs> we got thousands of lines i got no experience and i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> You think I'm just? You think I'm gonna smack it out the park? No, you gotta be. You gotta be ready for them ones. You know? Some people, what they 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 could probably do it for thirty minutes. Well, how about every day for like the next six weeks? How about that? <laughs> 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 Can your voice take that? So it's it's, mm-hmm. it's that kind of thing. It's that kind yeah. Of thing. So I'm like I mean, it's it's just training, isn't it? It's training. The more that uh, we talk, the more of a Jamie Foxx or Childish Gambino vibe I get from you. You must have one of the most decorated CVs out there. You've just done it all. <laughs> like, I feel like you're going to tell me that you used to rap as well and you got uh, yeah, album coming rap, out. Yeah, a couple of <laughs> <laughs> do, do you know what it is? Like, it's, not a, it's not a bragging thing. It's more a thing of like, because I know like Jamie Foxx is, was similar. Like, I remember Jamie Foxx saying his grandma used to like make him do different things like like make him learn how to play the piano and and they take acting lessons and things like that because all those skills are going to come in handy in the future and they do so i just love like and like being from a teaching background i can see how firsthand how education can help people like i used to have there's kids used to be in my school where in my class where um like english was their second language and then like after seeing them grow up over the years like doing like drama and theater studies and things like that like they're, they're, their English is fire by the time, like mm-hmm. three, four years later. All, and I'm not saying it's all down to that, but like all of that stuff helps. So yeah. like when they're, they're able to kind of communicate and do things, like it, it seems like English is their first language because they know how to, they know how to kind of put themselves forward confidently without shying away and, 
and hiding and hiding because oh, my English isn't good enough. And so like my thing has always been a thing of like, it doesn't matter what skills like I attain, keep them there because they're going to come in handy one day. And like, there's so many things that I've learned from when I'm, I was younger and I make sure if any opportunity comes up, I make sure to use them because that makes you unique against anybody else because they ain't got that that background or that history that you have you're, you're bringing in your background in history into whatever you're doing no one else you're you're irreplaceable because who are they gonna replace you with they, no one's gonna have mm. those same set of skills yep. no nope. <laughs> they're not gonna have those same set of skills so so, <laughs> so, so like that's that's what i try to do like with with anything i i, I do is always try and make sure that i'm including something including the skill that i have so i can like incorporate it into something else that i'm doing like for, for example like i know how to build like websites and html sites and things like that like and and javascript and things like that and so when it when it comes down to it there's there's been certain projects where i've added that in and utilized that and like like now i got like a, a like there's like a i got like a twitch app for like my my, my supporters and when and when they go on there there's like a whole app that's made just for them that they can use because that's the skills that I've got and I've put it into something that makes it uniquely mine and so like yeah so like when you say oh which 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 twitch like people streamers got their own app I got mine <laughs> but like nobody else does because like they don't have yeah, the same don't. necessarily have the same set of skills but like I make sure to like whatever set of skills that I have I try and use it in original ways for for the things that i'm doing so it just not it's not a case of setting myself apart but it's more a case of making things more unique and original and i, and I like doing that and i like making things that you can original. it's not that all the people don't really take notice half the time so like mm. it doesn't really matter like <laughs> but for me it matters because i know i'm doing it for me i'm not doing it for anyone else i'm not doing it for like millions of views because i don't get them like <laughs> not doing it for millions you of will followers. you will <laughs> Maybe, maybe, but like at the same, but it's one of those things where it's like I know that when I'm, whenever I'm getting hired to do something or I'm creating something myself, I'm making sure I'm put, I'm utilizing skills that I know that I have, and I'm putting them in there. Because it makes me it makes me irreplace not irreplaceable, but it makes it hard for people to want to replace me for yeah. something else. Yeah, no, I hear that. Talk to me about Christmas on the mistletoe farm. Oh, sick! Yeah, yeah. Talk to me about your role. How you got that? Did you? Was it very traditional? How you, you know, auditioned and then got the position? Um, and tell me a little bit about the film. Uh, that one, I, I think I'm allowed to say that that one that one got offered to me because they just, they just knew who I was. And, um... oh, must be nice. <laughs> 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 you know, it is. It, it's, it's, you know, what it is. This game is about being patient. Like a lot of people especially in the content creation game as well people want things now, now like they yeah. see their they see their favorite people getting things left right and center and they're like yeah i want the same things i've been putting in work but listen i've been putting in work for decades and like some of these seeds i've planted were was before half of these people were born and like this has been watered nicely over time <laughs> being patient and so and then when and then when you do that enough like eventually like you don't you don't have to kind of go through the same slog like some other people do sometimes you get things offered and then they, they'll offer it to you so it was similar to this like they like they'd seen the work that i've done they've seen all the tv shows that i've worked on and different programs and things uh and like there's enough content out there if you google my name yeah. for them to find to to know if oh, this is the person i want to work with and and i've worked with enough people in tv and film for them to know have you worked with this person before what's he like for them to say yeah this guy i like this guy and so yeah it was one of those ones um which is why it's always important not to be a kid in in this game isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's important it's important i'm so sorry that, i can't believe you, you censored yourself that was amazing <laughs> Man, i always said myself so i'm working kids tv <laughs> that's, your, that's fair that's fair i used to be a teacher remember <laughs> I know exactly where to send to myself. Goodness, that was <laughs> immaculate. That was live TV esque. <laughs> Listen, what if I get caught slipping? That's mm. it. That's game mm, over. That's what? All it takes up. is what it takes one stupid person on Twitter to clip it out and then send it out. Oh, is this who you're hiring on the BBC? <laughs> <laughs> game over, bro. You seen it happen? Oh, of course. 
no, Twitter you know. attack this man. <laughs> I said I can't. I said this. I can't hide behind no next next persona. I'm using yeah. my own name out there everywhere. <laughs> so if I need to anytime, then that's what happens, isn't it? <laughs> very, very smart. <laughs> <laughs> you got, bro. Listen, I said this before. I, I said I said this many times. I was like, as like I see life as like a video game, isn't it? And Life is like a video game, and for some people, they're playing it on easy, isn't it? Some people play on easy. Being a black person in this country, I'm playing on hard mode, isn't it? Mm-hmm. No, no continues, no extra lives, no checkpoints, <laughs> no tutorials yep. at the beginning, no saves, annual, <laughs> no <saves>. annual. <laughs> yeah, but I'm playing nice and patient. I'm playing it casual, isn't it? Let me take my time with this. Let me get to the end of the level, isn't it? How about that? Some people, bro, there's some people they start. Bro, they start with like hundred thousand gold coins. Mm. <laughs> they already got the safe house. Mm. Every town, <laughs> family sorted out the safe house in every town for them. Summer house. Bare <laughs> lives. They can mess up loads of times. Bro, they can f- up as many times as they like. <laughs> Bare times, but they can still they still get there though. Isn't it? You know them people. You see them. Yeah. How many yeah. times they have to mess up and they still got they still got audience. They're still making mm-hmm. monies. Still got all these brands and sponsors and all them things. Some of them have films <laughs> coming out, huh? <laughs> and, then, bro, you, and you, you know that if we had to say, if we, if we went what? for the same thing, it's game over. Look what happened to Mr. Smith. <laughs> game over. Uh, look what happened to Mr. White. <laughs> <laughs> The same action, and I would say Mr. White was even worse. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> one's a CEO, the other one, he, you know, his co workers won't talk to him on set. It's mad, it's mad. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like that. Like the, ga- the game, game is not fair, innit? So, therefore, you need to do all the things. Like, like I said, like I play, I play, get, I play my life like it's a video game. I mm-hmm. make sure I get all my skill points, put them in all different areas, so like man's balanced. <laughs> <laughs> Get skill points in all different areas. Take my time, in it. No continues. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like the first person that said, "I see life as a video game," but it's truly explained the the mentality behind it. Yes, you, get it. you understand. The game is the uh, game. We all know people <laughs> playing on easy. You know the ones. No Some death. You can't yeah. get there. <laughs> you can't die. You know the ones. <laughs> <laughs> We all know someone. Any, they always succeed. Mm-hmm. Bear companions by their side. Pick them up, <laughs> help them through it. Carry them. You know what I mean? <laughs> Got all the tools at the beginning. All the unlocks. <laughs> <laughs> at the beginning, again, they got bare unlocks. You know, you know those lads. You know oh, those man. lads. Everyone Famous before someone. they can even speak. Mm. <laughs> What's it called? Nepotism babies? <laughs> Nepotism babies. They, bruh, they started on they started on chapter three. <laughs> it is start on chapter one. They started on chapter three the head. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um of course you've been on so many other platforms, as you said, you've been on BBC, you've been on Love Island, you've been um various games. Are there any future projects that you can drop on here that you're going to be on? Or is that all blocked off? Uh, sadly, to... I can't, the, the issue with work, the issue with like my line of work is you can't talk about nothing, which is the which is the is the annoying thing. Yeah, but there's so many f- amazing things that I've been working on that I can't say nothing until it drops, and then someone gives me the go ahead to say, "Yeah, you can say you're involved." Like I'd love to tell you like all the stuff. There's like I I know for certain there's a couple games coming up that I know you're gonna be playing. So, but like, I can't even say nothing. But, okay. but you know when the game comes out because yeah. I know you're gonna be playing it. Mm-hmm. I've seen the games you play, so it's all good. <laughs> but like, I think the one thing I can talk about is like uh, I'm involved in Horrible Histories now. I'm on. I'm part oh, of the, the. I'm part of the main cast of Horrible Histories now. Uh, as we re- we filmed uh, two series um, end of last year, so uh, hopefully it will, it will be out by. Uh, March, maybe April this year, like the first of those series will be coming out. So, yeah, it, it, it was it was a tough one as well. I, I think I, uh, at the end of it, I played a hundred and five characters, so it was a it was a lot of characters, wow. a lot of lines to learn. But uh, but but as I said, like as I said, all this stuff is like I've already put the training in because like mm. I've been doing all those all the things that I needed to do in order to kind of 
get to those st- to that stage. So when those opportunities come, I know what to do, and I'm not I'm not like getting stressed or flaky yeah. or, or or panicking. I think Absolutely. I always think that's important. Like my my always my mantra is always be ready for any opportunity because the one thing I hate is an opportunity come your way and you ain't ready for it. Mm. It's the worst Such feeling. Such a shame. Yeah. It's the <laughs> worst feeling when you get a sick opportunity and you're not ready for it and you flop it. And it's like, <laughs> that's, that's not coming again. Yeah. Like, I'd, I'd, like, I'd, my thing is, I love being ready for an opportunity before it comes because when it comes, you're ready to smack Boom. the shit yeah. out of it because you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it. Be waiting. What time do you call this? <laughs> and then you, and you take that opportunity, you run with it, and then you're like, yo, is this what this guy did with, with that opportunity? That's that's what I want to have, rather than, oh, I weren't ready for that thing, man. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, it's the worst, because obviously you there's a lot of opportunity. Yourself. And then, you know, that, that trust that the other party is putting you. Yeah, because like, okay, you do don't I give know this... what, someone yeah. must have been gassing the right mm-hmm. people up. It was like, yo, you know these people? This is, the, this is the person. This is the person, and then they come to the person. It's not that. It's not person. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a big opportunity around the corner that you know you might be talking yourself out of. So be careful. <laughs> be ready. Ready, please, please. Put the work in, and just be patient. <laughs> Thank you so much for being so gracious with your time, I know This has been an amazing podcast. I've learned oh, a lot. No worries, man. Sorry if I was I was talking too much there, man. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Hey, it's a podcast. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna listen, do? Listen, some people they're like, I don't like that person. <laughs> well, you know what? I've There's seen always... the comments on some of these podcasts before. <laughs> Not this one. I'm talking about just podcasts in general. It's like, well, this person talks too much. And it's like, that's a podcast, isn't it? Like, well, yeah. Yeah. Right. I I have a personal gripe <laughs> with people that interrupt people t- uh, too many times. So that's one of the things that I don't like. But hey. <laughs> I was in trying to pair times. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> That was not a shot. It was not a shot. Look, <laughs> look I know I'm digging myself a hole here. Look. <laughs> so if anyone would like to follow you or find out more about you, where can they find you? Uh, just, you could just, just type in I know on, in Google. There's not many. Of me. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm, I know on, 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 on some platforms, I nearly as on others. Because the only reason I'm I nearly on others is people are sitting on my name in it and they're not doing anything with it. I, I wouldn't mind if they, I wouldn't mind if they do if they're using the handles in it. Mm. They're not using the handles in it. <laughs> have, you, have you trademarked your name? I don't think I don't no because there's a, there's a company that uses my name as well. Oh, okay. so I don't think I can. Okay. I could look into it though because that would have been so sick if you trademarked your name and then be like, mm, take that, <laughs> change no, your I name. Think it, <laughs> I think it's an Eastern European co- uh, company that uses my name for something. Okay. And there's there's a few there's a few emails out there, but just in in the UK there's just there's many. not many. Yeah, yeah, if we, if I was to type I know in Google, I'd get you. <laughs> yeah, if you so. type my full name, it's definitely me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so make sure to follow I know. Um, Christmas on the Mistletoe Farm is that on Netflix? Yeah, I think it's on Netflix. I haven't seen it, bro. I haven't seen most <laughs> of the stuff. I've, I haven't seen most of the stuff I, I've I've made. <laughs> I believe it's on that people. If I'm not, please feel free to correct me in the comments. I know you no, listen, listen. It's, it's not like an ego thing. It's, it's more a case of like, I've done a good job. I, I don't want to watch yeah. myself back. It's oh, I get that. Yeah, it took me a few years to be comfortable with my own voice and face. <laughs> I don't mind my voice and face. It's just like, I don't need to watch it back. I was in it, innit? <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> I just checked. It is on Netflix, so make sure you check out Arnell's yes. work there. You can catch him on Arnellius on Twitch for those amazing streams and on YouTube. You can also keep it locked with the Streamcast, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Streamcast underscore, Streamcast TV on Twitch. We're on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from about 9 p.m. UK time. The Streamcast.co.uk. If you would like to read gaming blogs, we got you. If you want to find out about our events, that's the place you want to go. And you can actually watch all of our content there. Um, Our podcast is available on all audio-only platforms, Spotify, Apple, Amazon, wherever. And we are on YouTube. So if you are watching us right now, give us a thumbs up, drop a comment. 
drop a comment now and uh, yeah. tell us where you recognize I know from if you do. If it, is it from an advert? Is it from a game? Is it from his streams? Let us know. Um, and also, also as well, on, on, on the comment, let us know you made it to the end of the video, innit? Let's say, yeah, yes. Yeah, end, end man. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, end yes. Gang. Yes. Or end non-binary, one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. End gang. <laughs> yes, if you've watched this to the end, hashtag end gang in your comments. <laughs> hashtag end gang. Let's do it. And that's yeah, just you only know that if you got made to the end, didn't it? <laughs> exactly. And then you're going to see people just go, what's end gang? What's end gang? Watch the video, bro. <laughs> exactly. That's how you know. Watch the, that's how you yeah, reply in the comment. Watch the video, bro. <laughs> I've already I've already taken parry that from I know I'm taking hashtag end gang as well. <laughs> parry that. Parry that. We do have a patron as well, patreon.com forward slash streamcast. So if you want to support the streamcast even more, there's all the information you need there. But I'm going to wish you all a fantastic week. Take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Stay safe, and we'll see you on the next streamcast. Mm -hmm.